Today I'm going to show you a quick routine that you can use to improve your shoulder posture and alignment. What's going on you guys? It's Blake Bowman here with Gorilla Zen Fitness and in today's video I'm going to be showing you a quick routine that you can use to improve your shoulder posture and alignment almost instantly. It only takes a few minutes to do this. What you're gonna see me demonstrate in a second here is a mix of different effective techniques for changing the shoulder's alignment, okay? Self-myofascial release, strengthening, uh, some joint distractions. These are all mixed and matched from previous videos that I've made before. But what I've done today is I've consolidated them all into one routine just to give you a, a point of reference, one routine that you can look at anytime you need to have good shoulder posture. Maybe you're going into the gym and you wanna have good alignment in your shoulders before you do heavy bench press or pulls. Maybe you have a meeting coming up and you know, you're concerned about how your posture looks. If you have bad shoulder posture, this routine that I'm gonna show you here today is going to target all of the most common muscle imbalances of the shoulder that are distorting the shoulder posture's alignment and by doing this, we're gonna be able to create a pretty instantaneous change after just a few minutes of work. So that's the whole point of today's video. Let's get into it. Before we get into this video, I'm really active on Instagram nowadays, so make sure you go check out my Instagram channel over here. And I upload tons of content like this, corrective exercises for posture. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and do that. Other than that, let's get started with the exercises. The first thing that we're gonna start with is some self-massage of your pec muscles, all right? These muscles are very commonly tight in people. When they're tight, they're gonna pull the shoulder forward into anterior frontal rotation. And they're also going to internally rotate the shoulder like this. So there's two options. If you have a massage gun like this, any brand will do, they're pretty much all the same. This would be optimal. If you don't have one of these and you just have a ball, a massage ball, this is an alpha ball from Tune Up Fitness. You can also use a baseball or any other kind of ball. You can use either of these. I'll show you how to use both. If you have a percussion massager like this, which I would highly recommend using, it's far superior to most self-myofascial release tools that we have. Basically, just turn this thing on and it's kind of loud, hopefully you guys can hear me. You're basically gonna work all of the pec major fibers all the way from the shoulder here. You're gonna work all the way across to the sternum where those attach, all right? Spend about 15 seconds doing this whole muscle. Do the same thing on the other side. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the pec minor, which is, I'm gonna turn this off just so you guys can hear me. It's more vertical in terms of its orientation. It's about right here, all right? Make, some, make sure you spend some time in there. You might wanna put your arm behind your head and try to like get in there from the side like this, all right? You'll know when you're on it because it's probably gonna be really, really tight and uncomfortable on you when you have uh, this pressure in it from the roller. The worse your shoulder posture is, the more likely you are to be tightening that muscle. So kind of spend some time broadly doing the pec major, which is this large chest muscle, and then try to get underneath that, come off to the side, work this um, you know, vertical orientation of the pec minor muscle fibers, all right? That's a smaller muscle underneath the pec major that is actually more of a player in terms of postural misalignment than even the pec major is. But the whole point of starting with this is to get rid of this tension in the front of our shoulders that are pulling us in and twisting our shoulders in. If you don't have a massager and you just have a ball like this, it's very simple to do this with this as well. Frankly, it's not as, you know, it's not as effective, but the way that this can be done is you put the ball down, you put your pec right on it, and place that arm behind your back, and then kind of the same thing. We're moving from kind of the shoulder all the way to the sternum, and then back to the shoulder working those pec major muscle fibers, right? You're trying to relax when you're doing this. If you're tensing up and recoiling as a response to the massage that you're doing, you're really defeating the purpose. You have to stay relaxed. You have to consciously override your muscle, all right? Make sure that it's actually relaxing and not tightening up more <laughs> when you're trying to release it. With regards to the pec minor muscle fibers, I really don't like a ball for getting in there. If you don't have a massage gun, I would just tell you to use your hands. Put your arm overhead like this, kind of come off to the side and kind of pull the pec major muscle fibers out of the way like this and then press straight down, right? So it's kind of this motion, pull away, press straight down. All right, you're trying to find these pec minor muscle fibers. I'm on mine right now, all right? You might need to Google this 
to kind of get a better idea of the anatomy and location of this muscle. But it's very important that you kind of find that, right? Like I said earlier, that's more of a, a player than the pec major is in terms of distorting your shoulder posture in the first place. So it's really important that we're releasing this. I like to go up and down, which is called stripping. Spend about 15 seconds doing some stripping, coming up and down this fiber, the fibers of this muscle. And then I'll, I'll go side to side like this, kind of like you're strumming a guitar. Spend only about 15 minutes doing each of the, or 15 seconds doing each of those techniques. And then we're gonna move on to the next, you know, part of the shoulder flow here. For this next part in the sequence, what you're gonna need is a resistance band. What we just did was we got rid of a lot of the tension in the pecs, which are pulling the shoulders forward and into internal rotation. Now we need to take advantage of that loosened tissue that we have in our chest and promote more tension in the upper back, okay? Specifically in the external rotators of the shoulder and the scapular retractors, the muscles that pinch the shoulder blades together. And that's what these next two exercises that you're gonna need a resistance band uh, are going to address, right? We're gonna be strengthening up that area. So you're simply gonna do two sets of band pull-aparts and two sets of neutral arm external rotations. You're gonna do 10 reps of each. I'll show you how to do that specifically here right now. So hopefully you can see me. I can see myself in the frame here. You might not be able to see my head very well, but uh, you'll, get the, you'll still get benefit from this movement. To start off here, we're gonna grab the band, any kind of resistance band will do, it doesn't have to be like this, it can literally be any kind of band. You're gonna grab it so that your thumbs are up, right? I like to actually lace it between these two fingers, kind of like that. And then what we're gonna do here is you're simply gonna pull the band apart until it about touches your chest, and then you're gonna come back to a neutral position. You're gonna do 10 of these. As you're doing this, think about pushing your arms away from one another, like that, all right? Don't go past your shoulders all the way back here. Stop as soon as that band touches your chest and push the arms out that way as you're doing it, all right? What that is going to do is strengthen up those muscles of the upper back, the scapular retractors. We got rid of that tension here pulling you forward. Now we're creating more tension strategically in the upper back to take advantage of that slack and pull your shoulders back so that you're more open, all right? So for that, you're gonna do 10 reps. And what I'd recommend you do is superset that with neutral arm external rotations, like I said. How you're gonna do that, same thing with the resistance band. You can do these standing, I'm just doing them kneeling because it's easier for me to record it this way. You're gonna start like this, all right, with the uh, band in your hands. You're gonna bring your arms out to the side and you're simply gonna twist out like that, all right? What you're trying to do is pinch the shoulder blades together as you do this, all right? So I'll give you a different angle here. I'm gonna kind of sit back on my heels to show you a little bit better. But it's gonna look more like this. All right, we're trying to twist the arm bone out, lift the chest up and pinch the shoulder blades together simultaneously as you know we're twisting the arms out like this, all right? This is what we're doing. And we're using the resistance band to provide resistance to this motion, all right? This stacked with the band pull-aparts has a lot of synergistic value, all right? It's really gonna help to keep those shoulders pulled back in an externally more open position, externally rotated more open position, which is exactly what you need. You know, that's what constitutes good shoulder posture. And that's what we're trying to address here today. We're getting rid of that tension here, which is what we started with. We're creating more tension in the upper back. Again, you're gonna do two sets of 10 of each of those exercises with the resistance band. And now we're gonna move on to the last exercise. This is called a joint distraction. I've showed this before in other videos using a resistance band. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do it with a foam roller, all right? I'll link that video down below where I teach you how to do this with a heavy duty resistance band just in case you wanna check that out. But it's all the same. Basically what we're gonna be doing here is using the foam roller, not how we would typically use it to release muscles. We're simply using this as a point of contact to get the arm bone to become pushed posteriorly backwards. We're trying to do this with it, all right? What this is gonna do is it's going to ad address the joint capsule itself, all right? Basically the shoulder joint, the joint itself and the connective tissues within it become, become stiff when you're kind of rounded forwards like this in the back of the joint. This is pushing the arm bone back that way, all right? And stretching out 
the joint capsule itself. It's just gonna synergize well with all these other things that we've done today. And this is an integral part in this little 10 minute routine that I'm showing you here. It's pretty simple how to do this. And again, we're using a foam roller, but we're not using it how you would typically use a foam roller, which would be to release tight muscles, right? We're using this to actually push the humerus back uh, into a better position. So I like to kind of put the roller down like this, almost vertical like that, but with a slight angle. You get down like this, put just your humerus on the roller, bring your arm behind you. And this is the tricky part. Kind of trying to relax, let your chest sink down and let that roller push your arm up like this. All right, you're sinking down. You're trying to push the head of the arm bone, the humerus, backwards into the back of the joint capsule. And you're not forcing this too hard, but you are using a decent amount of pressure. And we're just holding this position for about 30 seconds to end this shoulder flow. Obviously, you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but that's it. The important thing for you to remember when you're doing this is the reason why you're doing it in the first place, which in this case is to free up the joint capsule, get it more used to sliding backwards like this, right? Right now, it's likely used to the opposite, being forward and internally rotated, right? We've already addressed a lot of the, the softer tissues, the muscles that will pull it into that position. Now we're addressing the joint capsule itself and we're pushing that humerus back. Okay, the humerus again is the arm bone. Now, it's important when you're doing this that you're not on top of the clavicle, your collarbone here, right? You don't wanna be doing it here. We're not rolling the pecs. You gotta bring it out to the outside so that you're kinda of over here more. I don't know how well you can see that. Again, we don't wanna be doing it here. We want it here. Just kind of so that it's directly on the head of the arm bone here. This is what we're trying to literally push back, right? Trying to get you out of this into this. And this is an amazing stretch that really helps with it. As you're doing it, as you're laying on the roller, if you want to kind of assist your joint moving that way, you can kind of pull the, the shoulder back using your scapular muscles while you're holding that stretch. But that's pretty much it. Do that one to end this sequence and spend about 30 seconds on each side. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then you're really gonna like my free ebook called Posture, The Ultimate Life Hack. I show you a bunch of exercises like today, but we're kind of more focused on the whole body in this book, okay? So it's free, it's available on my website. If you wanna get this free ebook called Posture, The Ultimate Life Hack, just open up the description down below, click the first link available there, once that's clicked, that's gonna take you over to my, web, my website. Once you get there, I'll ask you for your email. As soon as you enter in your email, I'll send you a copy of this ebook within five minutes. If you're looking for another place to get that free workout, you can click this button right over here and that'll take you over to that same page on my website. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, go ahead and do that up there. And if you wanna see another video very similar to this one, then click this link right over here. That's it for today. See you next time.